All right, so most Himber wallets or most uh, Himber envelopes on the market or Z Fold wallets or two way out devices, switch devices, can be fairly expensive. And so not a lot of people are willing to pay that much money for a simple little device like that. Now, there are cheaper ones on the market, but uh, you get what you pay for, if you know what I'm saying. Um, sometimes they're just not very good quality or what have you. But in today's video, I'm going to teach you how you can make your own Himber envelope. I'll just get it right out of the way. Uh, the cost of making this envelope is about seven US dollars. So not a lot of money. Uh, once you pay your seven bucks for these envelopes on Amazon, you have enough material to make at least a dozen envelopes. Not only that, I'm gonna teach you an amazing trick you can do with said Hember envelope. Let's get into it. Okay, so first of all, what is a Himber envelope? Well, basically what it is, it's an innocent looking envelope that has the ability to switch things or having a two way out for a prediction style trick or you can do anything with a Himber style anything. It's like a Himber wallet, uh, it's just an envelope. And so what it is, you can open the envelope one way, and if you need to, you can also open it the other way for, and these are different cards, obviously, so uh, you open it one way and the other way for two different outs or switching anything, right? So if you take, this is the one I made and the one I'm gonna teach you how to make, and it would be easy, right, to, uh, I just wanna show you something real quick. It would be very easy to just take two envelopes and then glue them back to back like this, and that would, essentially give you the same thing as what we're doing right now. But, you know, that's obvious and people can see that as two envelopes. So what we're gonna learn how to do is to make this uh, single style Himber envelope. You can see there's just one fold there. It's not two envelopes. It really is a Himber envelope. And you will learn exactly how to make this elegant looking uh, envelope right now. All right, so obviously you will need the package of envelopes that you received uh, through Amazon. Uh, it comes, I think, in a pack of 60, uh, which is such a good bargain. You can get a couple of these packages uh, to make, you know, 20, 24, 25 envelopes. All right, so you'll need actually four envelopes to construct one Himber envelope. I know it seems like a lot, but I think uh, it's definitely worth it, okay? So uh, trust me when I say uh, it's, it's worth the time uh, to make this and um, the money, all right, which is not very much money, all right? So the, uh, the price of these envelopes is way lower than anything you'll find on the market. And I think that building your own gimmicks adds a certain joy uh, to what you're doing, right? There's a certain pride about it, especially when you do them good. All right, so this is how you make it. All right, so I'm going to switch to this red mat so you can see more clearly as to what I'm doing, okay? So you'll also need a glue stick and a pair of scissors for this uh, construction of this Himber envelope, okay? So what you wanna do first is take one of the envelopes and you want to get uh, a mirror image of this uh, flap here, okay? So this top flap, this the flap that glues down, you want to cut uh, an exact copy of that on the back flap here. All right, so what I mean by that is if you, um, you want to have sort of a fold of exactly what this is. So just cut, just close it, and you want to just take your scissors and cut along this flap. I'll show you what I mean in a minute. So just take your scissors and really take your time with this because you want it to look legit, right? You don't want to look all ragged and whatever. So just see where that seam is and just cut around it a perfect copy of, of that flap there. All right, so just like this, almost done here. I'll probably speed this up so you can see uh, how to sit through this. All right, so once you have that done, what I was saying is that it's a perfect fold of uh, this flap here. So it's a copy of that fold that you have here just like this, okay? So now what you wanna do is uh, just cut a straight line um, across this. So uh, with a regular envelope, you'll see that it has sort of a, a straight edge there on the on the up on the bottom one. This bottom flap it has a straight edge, as opposed to this one having a um, a round edge. You want to put that same straight edge on the on the bottom portion of the flap there. So just take your scissors and cut not too much, just a little bit. 
uh, just like that. And this is what you should end up with, uh, just like this. Now take another envelope and do the exact same thing that you just did here, okay? So I won't make you sit through that, I'll just speed it up so we can uh, speed through this uh, video. Okay, so now you have two identical uh, little double flaps here, and these uh, will be important here in a minute, obviously, because we're building an envelope, okay? So now what you'll do is that exact same thing, but with the side flaps here, okay? So before you do that, you obviously have to uh, take apart the envelope. So just like when you're uh, splitting a card, just sort of loosen that glue there just by bending it back and forth just like this to just sort of loosen the glue a little bit so it's easier to peel apart, okay? So all you're gonna do here is peel apart uh, this bottom flap uh, just like this. So just grab a hold of that bottom flap there and just start to uh, just peel it off uh, like this. Boom, there you go. And it doesn't matter uh, if there's glue residue because that's gonna be covered up anyway, uh, just like this. So just take that apart. Now you just want to, again, just like how you did these, uh, cut around uh, this flap like this. So you have two pieces like this, but they're the side flaps, all right? So here's what I mean by that. So just take your scissors and try not to cut too far into it because you need that side as well. Uh, for the envelope, okay? So I'll just speed through this as well. You already know what I'm doing, so you don't have to see the whole thing. And really try to, uh, you know, like I said, take your time with this, try to make it look as good as possible. All right, so when you're done, you have also a double side flap, just like this. Same thing with the other side. Uh, once again, I'll speed this up for your viewing pleasure. So now that you have two uh, side flap pieces, it's time for the uh, final step in making uh, all the pieces that you need. So now you'll take your third envelope and now all you're going to do is take it apart and you just need uh, this single piece of paper that's the backing of it, all right? So I'm not gonna waste another envelope. I already have one over here that I've cut up uh, like this. So you just take the envelope apart, like I showed you how to peel it apart, and you just need this single backing piece of paper on it, okay? So we'd cut that top flap off. Also, you don't need that. All right, so the first thing you wanna do is get a piece of cardboard or something or uh, something to uh, put down so you're not getting glue everywhere. I'm just using the back of a notebook, works just fine. Now what you're gonna wanna do is take the glue and apply just a small amount uh, on one of the upper edges of this piece of paper, or right, just a tiny, tiny margin amount of glue. Not a whole, not the whole width of the glue stick by any means, just a small, small sliver of glue uh, along the edge here. All right, so take your glue stick and do just that to make sure you get those edges and just run it along the side. And I'd say this width is about the size of a spaghetti noodle. All right, so maybe a little bit thicker, I don't know. All right, depending on how you uh, prefer your pasta. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, I'm hungry. All right, so just like that. I don't know if the camera could pick that up or not, but uh, you might be able to see how just how thick or thin you want that glue to be. Now what you'll do is take one of these uh, one of these flaps uh, that goes over the top and put it in here like this. So you're here, here's the glue flap. So you want to actually put it uh, where the bottom flap is, okay? So where that straight edge is, uh, line it up against this this line here, right? the middle part of this flap, and just line it up against that uh, that there, okay? So and get it as good as you can. Uh, so you're like this, and you're just lining that up like how a real envelope would be, right? So just like this, and you want to get it on there as straight, maybe fold it as straight as you can, just like this and then you're good to go for this portion of the envelope. So just get it lined up nice and neat and give that a good crease to uh, uh, get the glue down. Now you want you don't want it to dry quite yet, so you wanna work kind of fast with this. I'll, sh I'll show you what I mean here in a minute. If you have any access sticking out like I do right here, just cut that little bit off and you'll be good to go. You'll be GTG, as my friend Mendel likes to say. Boom, just like that. 
Now you'll do the exact same thing on the other side of the envelope, all right? So uh, this rounded glue side is down here. So you just reverse that like this to get uh, the other side there, right? So now you're like this. So you can already see how it's turning into an envelope, right? So this is pretty cool. So now uh, you've glued the opposite side of, of this paper here. So just glue this side, all right? So the bottom of this glue side, you'll just do another strip here uh, like this. Remember, you don't want to do it too thick. You don't want to have a fettuccine noodle. You just want a spaghetti noodle. All right, so just like this, boom, 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 and your GTG, all right? So now you're like this, and just do the exact same thing. Just glue and make sure the straight edge meets the rounded edge, okay? So very important, all right? So just glue that down, uh, just like this. Remember, uh, you don't want to let it dry, so you wanna work kind of fast with this, okay? So there's probably more sophisticated methods of building this envelope, but this is just how I learned how to do it because I'm self-taught, <laughs> right? So I'm not the world's best gimmick maker by any means, but uh, you know, you get by, you do what you can. All right, so there's still a little bit of access on this. So we'll just cut that little baby off and we are GTG. All right, so for the side flaps here, what you wanna do is insert this um, into uh, one of the sides, just they want to go uh, below these two flaps here. So what I mean by that, this flap here just goes below uh, those two flaps, if that makes any sense. I'm sure it does for you. Now, uh, like I said, you want to want to take your time because you don't want to have this completely glued down on that side. So it has to go completely under there. So that's why you got to work kind of fast. Now let that glue dry completely. Okay. So just do this. Same thing with the other side. Uh, just like that. They go under there. Just like that. And look at that. You have an envelope, but there's still some more gluing to do. All right. So they go under these both flaps, just like this. You get the idea. And you want to make sure they are under both flaps on the other side as well. And notice how I have that um, the glue residue portion actually going under uh, that flap there, so it hides that anyway. All right, so just like that. Now just take your glue stick and just follow where those uh, that glue is. All right, so just put some glue where that glue residue is because that's where it was glued in the first place. So just put more glue down, just like this on both sides, uh, just like this. If you want to put some more, put a little more strip of glue uh, for your spaghetti there if you need to. You probably don't need to, but uh, yeah, just like this, and then just glue that baby down just like that, and that is the first part of your double-sided envelope, all right? So that's down, do the same thing on the other side, okay? So you're like this, just put some glue down, uh, just like you did on the other side, where you could imagine uh, those glue residue spots would be. And I really hope uh, you're, this is making sense because I've never taught anybody how to build a gimmick before. All right, so I'm hoping I'm doing a good job here for you. All right, so you're here. I'll just glue that down, just like that. And now, ladies and gentlemen, you have your Hember envelope. So just uh, press this down, maybe put a few decks of cards on top to let it dry uh, for a few, uh, maybe 30 minutes, obviously, all right? So maybe some more deck of cards here if you need to. All right, so maybe you can grab, I don't know, just grab a book or something, uh, just to make sure that's really nice and on there. Now when you're done, you will have a Hember envelope where you can put one card in one side, obviously a card in on the other side, okay? So now, uh, here is a nice trick you can do with a Hember envelope. So this is based on a Ted Leslie idea, and it's uh, brilliant, okay? So what you're going to do is take two cards, in this case I have a seven of spades in one side, and a seven of hearts on the other side, okay? So um, the way you can remember that is uh, bottom of my heart, so, the heart for me always goes uh, on the bottom portion of the envelope. And by the way, if you want to, you could take a small piece of double stick tape and uh, to actually seal the envelope, not really seal it, but to have sort of an envelope that closes, you could take just a small piece and put it uh, like this 
and then just gently uh, sort of weaken the tape so it doesn't stick on there and rip apart the paper. So just take your shirt here, and just dab it on your shirt a few times so that way the, the tape uh, starts to weaken so it doesn't tear paper or anything. And don't squeeze it down too hard because you want it to just stay, stay sort of nice and neat without tearing paper. All right, so just that's if you want to have a sealed envelope, okay? So you can, that's an option if you like. So to prepare this, uh, what you'll do is have the envelope in your pocket. And um, if you need to, you can have a little subtle mark um, to so you can always, <laughs> so you don't forget which side is which. Um, and what I like to do, here's a nice subtlety for a Himber envelope. If you have it just on the back of a deck of cards and bring it out and uh, just set it down to the side and bring the cards out and put the cards on top of the envelope, later on when you take it out, if you need to flip it, uh, people won't realize anything weird happened because that was a flip right there. But if it was just sitting there like this and all of a sudden I flip it, that would look kind of weird. But since the box is covering it, and if I need to flip it, I just do this and take it. That's, that's a natural thing to do because nobody's gonna remember that this was the upper side of the envelope anyway. All right, so uh, we're just like that. All right, so the two force cards that you have in there, in this case, the seven of spades and the seven of hearts, you wanna take those out and uh, you'll do a little treatment to them. All right, so seven of spades, seven of hearts. Uh, where'd it go? There it is right there. So what you'll do is give both of these cards a breather crimp. And it's, uh, it's a true breather crimp, so you'll do it face up, all right? So what I mean by that is you bend the cards like this. Uh, I'm sure you know what a breather crimp is, uh, but if you don't, read a Die Vernon book. <laughs> all right? so I, I'm just playing. I'll, I'll explain what a breather crimp is. So a uh, breather crimp, you're just making a sort of bends in the card in the shape of an X. So uh, take your fingers like this, like little pinchers, where your thumb's in between the pointer and the middle finger, just like that. And we're just like this in that same grip. And you bend the card up just like this and just across the card diagonally like this, not all the way through, just in the middle, all right? Just like this, not all, not all the way to the end, just in the middle of the card, okay? So I see people all the time doing doing this sort of thing, but that's not necessary. All you need is in the middle, all right? Just like this, and since I'm making an X, of course, diagonally on both sides of the card, just like that, and do the same thing on this card, all right? And now, last but not least, what you'll do is uh, mark these cards in a way that you know which one is which. All right, so just take a blue Sharpie and just dot it uh, on both sides and differently on both cards so you can tell which one is which and uh, you'll be able to see these cards if they show up. Okay, so now just put both of these cards in the deck and you're ready to begin. Now you just have them give the cards a shuffle and then put the cards down. And all the while you're not talking about a prediction, uh, you're just doing something with a deck of cards that doesn't really mean much right now. So after they shuffle, you want to have them uh, cut the cards over to here and then complete the cut. Now, if you do happen to see your breather on top or one of the marked cards on top, then you know that uh, you can have them stop cutting. But if they cut the cards and you see that you don't have a breather on top or one of the marked cards, then you just have them keep cutting. In this case, it's another one of them. Uh, but since you have two breather crimps in your deck, the likelihood of them cutting to a breather is very high. And uh, you just have them keep cutting until they do cut to one of those marked breather crimped cards. All right, so they're shuffling, shuffling, shuffling. And sometimes after they shuffle and put the deck down, one will already be on top. Sometimes it just works out like that. But if it doesn't, have them cut the cards. Boom, I just cut to one. And then, uh, yeah, if, if they don't cut to one right away, have them cut again. All right, so have them cut again if you don't see one and just keep going until one shows up on top. There's one right there. Blah, blah, blah. You cut the deck uh, several times after you shuffle. There's no way I could have known what card that would be. And uh, in this case, I know that this top card in this case is the seven of spades. All right. So you don't reveal that quite yet. Uh, but since you know where the seven of spades is in your envelope, you can reveal that before they even look at the card. Okay. So next, uh, as soon as you see that go on top, just have them take the card away without looking at it. I'm going to put the cards over to here. And then you just take the card box off. In this case, I know that the seven of spades for me is on top, but if it was the seven of hearts, well, how'd that happen? 
But if it was if it was a seven of hearts, you would just do this to flip the envelope. But since I know it's a seven of spades, I just take the box away and uh, say, look, remember I put this envelope down before anything even started. Inside of here, I put a card. Uh, it's a card that I had a feeling about uh, earlier today. And I can't explain it, but uh, I had a feeling about this card here, the seven of spades. Now you shuffle the deck. Uh, obviously, all the cards are different. And you could have picked any one of these. Uh, but the card that you chose to cut to, after all that shuffling, of course, is a seven of spades.